I was a child actor. I was on shows such as like The Wonder Years, um, all Nickelodeons, all that, um, like a bunch of freaks and geeks, um, a bunch of shows that if you're, you know, a younger person, you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And I would. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Nimble. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local and not so local music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and my guest today is the frontman for a heavy metal and hard rock band that's aiming to write heavy, catchy music with personal, meaningful lyrics, according to their bio. I met them while they were uh, playing a, sh a set uh, in a show that was just fully loaded with amazing metal talent at uh, Backstage Bar and Billiards, also known as Triple B to the locals, for uh, a show where Madzilla was headlining. They're formed in 2016. Their self-titled LP is coming soon. Please welcome to the channel, Lane Steele from Worldwide Panic. First of all, thank you for taking the time. Appreciate you. And um, how's how's LA treating you? Well, it's rainy as hell right now. Um, yeah, we had snow up here in Vegas for like yeah. five seconds. Yeah. And everybody freaked out. It always happens. It's like they forget. Uh, there's only been one year in the 17, 18 years I've been here that where it was worth freaking out. And that's where like tree limbs were breaking off from the weight of the snow and, you know, property damage was happening. And yeah, needless to say, lots of accidents. So that was um, that was fun. But no, this was literally it was raining. It was drizzling. And suddenly it was just cold enough that you're like, oh, wow, that's snow. And it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So right on. Well, let's talk music because. Um, but, Number one, I, I wanted to dig into a little bit of your your bio stuff here. Um, sure. in, in the intro, I mentioned how you uh, you aim to write heavy, catchy music with personal, meaningful lyrics. And what to you defines meaningful? Something of substance. You're not you're talking about um, you know some chick you fucked or you know um, so award you won or how much money you got you know you're talking about things that are deep and, and visceral and, and bring people to your place when you talk about it and you know you know express a mood that you know hopefully someone in the crowd can relate to definitely and in listening to your music i can definitely get, uh, hear some of that uh i'm excited to check out the uh, the lp I, I hope that you'll give me the opportunity to review it when it comes out uh and we can talk about that off camera. it's out Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, how did I miss that? Okay. February 17th, we had a big launch. Oh, geez. I mean, I'm like a, a week late on that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's so good. Well, in that case, send me the digital file and the lyrics, and I'll be happy to do a review of it for you. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, which leads me to the next question. What is active rock? in your? Because that's something that I saw on more than one of your uh, social media pages for the band. And I was so, wondering, what does active mean? It, It's a term that is coined not by me but you know by others in the industry to um basically say this is hard rock you know rock with an edge you know basically you know radio driven rock and roll with an edge hence the catchy yet meaningful yeah <laughs> gotcha okay I honestly had never seen it before, um, and, and so I was trying to figure. Yeah, it's out. an industry. It's an industry term, and so been, so many people just went ahead and called us that. That I was just like, you know, I, I guess you know. To me, if you ask me personally, what I think my band sounds like, I think we sound like industrial hard rock metal. Like that's what I think it is. Ah, you jumped ahead. That was going to be my one of my closers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. I, I I ask it of all my prey. I like I like throwing that. You know, let's hear the elevator pitch question out there because a lot of a lot of musical acts don't have it ready, and you kind of gotta be able to tell people what you sound like if you want them to, you know, have an interest at all. You have to. Yeah. So uh, that that and and having seen you guys live, that's that encapsulates it perfectly. I think. Um, I did I did notice at your set that uh, you had a little bit of 
like electronica type tracks happening or or some sort of you know electronica sounds where did those elements creep in or like when did that start becoming part of your sound good question um there you, go. you know um i'll give you the reader's digest so <laughs> you just dated wide, yourself <laughs> that was my first band ever and then <clears throat> i went on to go to music college and started a bunch of bands i joined a bunch of bands um didn't work out i ended up drunken on drugs i had to get sober um so i don't drink for like eight years now which is great and um in that process in the early years of my sobriety i decided that i was just going to leave the music industry altogether that it was just like i played with this band i played with that band i got signed to this label but they did this i did that like i could walk away and be happy and uh i wasn't i got bored <laughs> very easily and um yeah so how the electronics started as i said it started you know as my first band when i was 17 i ditched it i did other things and then i you know got sober i left the music industry i got bored i resurrected it and when i resurrected it it wasn't electronic it wasn't it wasn't industrial it was just very straight ahead rock metal boom and it was okay but you know i got bored with the simplicity of it all and you know i'm a producer songwriter by trade so you know i was like yeah i'll make this project super easy and i was like no let me actually sit down and like try to write a song and i think um one of the first songs to come out of that was party for us um off our off our last ep um and you know organizing the soundscape from there and realizing there's this beautiful thing called you know industrial music and electronic music that we can meld into this and make it sound really interesting so it just kind of flowed and then i i took the time to study all these different synths and different uh samplers and things like that and you know i just learned how to to adapt and really change the style of what was worldwide panic to what is worldwide panic you know and the way i look at it is if there's distorted guitars heavy drums heavy bass electronics and my vocals you can call it worldwide panic that's the way i look at it nice yeah yeah because it it, it was, it's, you used it very uh, subtly, you know, like it wasn't Nine Inch Nails or something, out, you know, out, right. out of the gate. And I was listening and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> they're not playing those notes on their instruments. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing other uh, extra stuff. And yeah. I always, I appreciate that when, it, when a, you know, an act will try to incorporate other media or other technology, then, you know, it's because there's always that question of like, well, it sounds really good. In, in the studio how am i going to replicate this live and things like That's that challenge. yeah um i once so, brief, brief aside brief tangent uh i i once uh, recorded an album where i had a song and i had this idea where i could i, I had like 90 percent of the guitar solo in mind of what i wanted to do but every single time every single take i did it different i, I right. and i had like seven different guitar solos but they were all rooted in the same song and so I, I told the, uh, the the sound engineer, I was like, hey, what if you play all those at once? And he did. And that was the final take with a little bit of tweaking. And I was like, I'm never going to re re replicate that live, <laughs> you know? And um, I, I always, I wonder now, like, well, what if I tried, you know? Right. Have like six guitar solos and then I play that seventh one live. <laughs> uh, but that was that was a lesson to me because the, the, the message was put out your best material don't worry about you know the live part put it out the best yes. you can make it and then worry about the live because very important it's never going to sound like it the album if it does sound like the album why would why would they pay to see you live i totally agree yeah so cool um now because this is a, a zoom interview by, by default that we're under a little bit of a time constraint but i do want to have a couple questions that i want to throw at you um and and this is 
you've already answered one of my uh, you know usual interview questions, which is how would you define your band's musical style? Cool, we we answered that. I right. want to let's take it back though. Uh, this is another one I, I like to ask. I want to talk earliest musical influence to you, and and this is where we're talking about Little Lane. You know when what was that moment you're like I want to do that. So it's not a happy story. Oh, crap. Um, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, You know, I, um, you know, I had a thimble full worth of knowledge of metal, hard rock, and things of that nature. Like, you know, I really, you know, had a very, very, very vague idea. And um, what happened was, you know, basically, I was a child actor. I was on shows such as, like, The Wonder Years, um, all Nickelodeons, all that. Um, like, a bunch of freaks and geeks. Um, a bunch of shows that, if you're you know, a younger person, you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And I was, <laughs> once again, Mr. Steele, you have read my mind and jumped ahead because I was going to be digging a little bit of that up, but that's awesome. Uh, please know, continue with your story though. And um, yeah, so I was a pretty dedicated to my craft actor at like the age of like six, like, oh. um, and you know, in and out of movie sets and, and TV sets and just that's that's the way I spent a lot of my childhood. So, um, you know, jumped to when I was a teenager and had a thimble full of knowledge of hard rock and metal. I ended up uh, getting sent away to a boot camp and a boarding school where I pretty much got my ass kicked on a daily fucking basis. And the only thing I had to do was stay up after everybody went to sleep and go in the bathroom and turn on the shower and like sing like No More Tears or Dragula or Enter Sandman and there's no music. It's just me with lyrics, you know, in a bathroom. Right. And that's the moment that I knew I wanted to quit acting and do this because this saved my life and acting didn't do anything for me. Yeah, I... I, I... <laughs> I briefly dipped my toe in those waters when I was younger too. Not that young, but I saw enough to be like, mm, no, no, let's try this music thing. And yeah. well, now I'm now I, I'm on YouTube, so the music thing didn't quite pan out like I was hoping either. But you know, that's Still in it, bro. take a number, take a number. Uh, but yeah, so you did mention you know the childhood actor thing, and I was going to ask where you know how did that lead up to the music and now you've kind of answered that as well so you're making my job easy i gotta say <laughs> thank you so much um so from that question about earliest musical influence and uh and thank you very much for you know divulging that for for opening yourself up like that i do appreciate that sure um was there ever a period where you were considering doing music that wasn't harder were you ever, did you ever get bit by the singer songwriter bug of, you know, I'm going to play acoustic in, in the corner and yes. whatever? Yes. Ah, what happened there? Um, it's so much more than just that. You know, it was the spoken word stuff that I did in the early 2000s, which I was really passionate about and I did tons of shows with. Um, I really felt strong about that and um, um, somewhere and I can't find it there's a whole spoken word album that I have that has music over it you know um, and that was really interesting to me um, but uh, a few years ago I decided to embrace the solo artist um thing i think sometime 2020 2021 and um you know i put an honest attempt forward in you know cultivating a really unique live experience in my opinion 
you know, which showcased a lot of my different band's works, um, some original songs that are made just for this solo project, and, you know, some really interesting covers. I mean, if you heard any of the covers that I've done, you know that I don't do verbatim covers. No, so, and I feel that that's the only way to do it, is to <clears throat> put your own spin on it. Otherwise, it's karaoke. So it had some really interesting things in it, and I had a musical accompanist, and, uh, you know, we tried. We went out on the road. Uh, we did a four-day tour. We we did a lot of things locally. We did um, we did a live streaming thing. Uh, but um, I got really disheartened because I believed that my fans from Worldwide Panic would be excited. <laughs> I'm not talking shit about my fans. I'm just saying... Uh, you got to make them happy. And I put out this, you know, solo single called Do You Think of Me? So it's Lane Steele, Do You Think of Me? You can look it up on Spotify or anything like that. And um, <laughs> it just uh, did not transpire at all, at all. <laughs> And, like, no fan conversion, no World of Panic fan was, I've been waiting to hear this. Yeah. It's just, it kind of just made me feel like they only like me when I'm in the paint yelling into a microphone holding an oversized guitar. So I was like, okay, well, if that's what you want, then I'll do that. <laughs> you know, but, like, you know, as far as this uh, vision of being, like, a Jackson Brown uh <laughs> You know, a dark Jackson Brown, it's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's the next Bukowski. Right. Mm. Okay. Um, so before we move on, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you don't know, I, I should have said this at the intro. Uh, if, if you don't know who Lane Steel or Worldwide Panic is, thank you very much for watching. I, you must just be a fan of the channel. And I appreciate you. Um, the best way that I can say you can support the local music scene wherever you are is to go to shows and the second best way is to check out my des the description of videos like this where i interview them because their social media handles will be there and you know links to various things that they have online so that you can keep up with them and and catch them live because that's why we do it is you know the live shows um so speaking of checking things out here's a quick message from future josh and now a word from our sponsors Thanks, Josh, from the past. You know, the Earth is pretty great. Humans and their technology, on the other hand, not so much. We've kind of treated it a little poorly. I do believe I'm on fire. Now, obviously, I'm a big fan of technology and innovation. That being said, is there a way to have my tech and protect the Earth at the same time? Yep, it's called Nimble, and it's awesome. Nimble is a computer tech brand committed to creating high-quality, eco-friendly tech products at lower costs. They offer wireless charging products, 18-watt USB Type-C portable chargers, personal device protective cases, cables, and more. All made from plant-based bioplastics, fabric made from 100% organic hemp and recycled PET from plastic bottles, recyclable aluminum, and zero paints or toxic substances. Nimble's plastic-free packaging is 100% recycled scrap paper with no harmful inks, adhesives, or dyes, making it 100% compostable. To accomplish all of this, Nimble focuses on beautiful design and leading performance, using sustainable materials for products and packaging, holding suppliers to strict guidelines, providing transparency around production and pricing, and addressing the growing problem of electronic waste through a recycling initiative tied to the purchase of every product. They're awesome, and they're going to help the planet. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your entire order. Just enter the coupon code CHARGE10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Nimble for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back. And uh, if that sponsor spot interested you at all, the best way you can support Room 6 is to click that sponsor link. It'll help me out. And you'll get something out of the deal as well. I also have down there uh, in the uh, description a link for Room 6 social media. It's all the places that you can find stuff from me, as well as uh, ways you can support the channel, such as Patreon, Room6.shop, which is my online merch store, or um, buy one of my CDs. What the hell? It is not heavy metal. It is the acoustic-based rock and roll love song stuff that every 
guy writes at some point in his life, and a lot of women too. So yeah. moving on. Um, how long you didn't like you weren't born in L.A. When did the the move to L.A. happen? I was born in L.A. Wait, were you? So I missed that somehow. I thought I thought yeah, I thought I, I saw you live somewhere in, else. I was born in San Dimas, California. Hmm. Well then, um, I spent most of my formative years um, in Bellevue, Washington, which was a suburb of Seattle, basically about thirty minutes outside nice. Seattle. And um, that's where I spent most of my childhood, and that's why I really don't have like a Los Angeles vibe to me. You know, it's because I was raised somewhere else. Like, I was raised with a totally different moral, like, outlook oh. than L.A., you know, and, um, you know, sometimes that behooves me and sometimes that works against me, but, like, I'm just not one of these L.A. say something and don't do it poser type guys. I'm a guy who was raised by real men who did real things to survive <laughs> yeah um i i'm on the fence about that type of thing because i grew up a lot of what you're saying is, is hitting certain nostalgia notes for me because i grew up in a lot of those same situations or having to learn just you just crap's gotta get done you know you, you gotta learn to survive or or and get stuff done and yeah. and that's the way of it and i have a 15 year old uh teenage child and 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 over the years, there have been moments where I'm like, have I, you know, have I got, have things been too comfortable? But at the same mm -hmm. time, you don't want your kid to suffer. And, you know, and, and we all raise our kids to be like, not have to go through some of the things we went through or to, you know, we try not to be the, the parents our parents were, that type of thing. Right. And it's, it's so hard to, to, to not want to be their buddy. You know, and, and yeah. you can't, you can't be their buddy. But anyway, this isn't a pairing show. <laughs> Moving on. So um, we have a couple, couple more questions. So thanks for hanging in there. Um, number one, what's the next big thing on the, on your radar that's coming down the pipe people should know about? Can't talk about it. Uh-huh. Well, bear, <laughs> bear in mind, this, this isn't going to post for probably a month. So I'm, I'm kind of backlogged, but uh, yeah, right. no, I mean, something we're, cool is coming. We're 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 gonna go on. Yeah, I don't want to be. Oh, well, stay tuned. But um, you know, suffice to say, we are gonna go on a tour again. Um, we're gonna service the record. Um, we're probably gonna do another music video off the record. Um, we're gonna be releasing a new single, probably within the next like four to six months. Oh, that reminds me. Sorry to interrupt, but um. After this interview, stick around. I, I think are we, we're going to be tacking on a music video after this. Yeah, sure. Oh, right on. Uh, you have to stick around to find out which one, though. Or you can look at the description, because I'm sure it's typed down there. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, we will be releasing new material. It won't be a long gap until you guys hear a next single from us. You know? And, um, yeah, we're going to be in your face for a while. In your face, metal that's in your face. Yeah, <laughs> there's a tagline you can use that one <laughs> right on. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what is the best burger and why is it a demu? The demu, uh, you posted something or there's something on the channel that's on your, on your page that says the best burger is a demu, D I M M U. I have no idea what it was. I said this. Some some worldwide panic. It's on the page. I have the no best, idea what a demu is. The best burger is a demu. Yeah, D I M M U. No say. No no idea. So I I thought when I was this you. post. When was this post? I, I, I'd have to dig it up. Uh, let me ask this real quick. What is one thing you wish someone had told you about the music scene that that would have been great to know when you started? And don't say change your strings. No, um, I try now as an elder statesman to kind of like help younger acts and bands that, you know, come through my studio. I talk to on the phone, play shows with, you know, if you want 
advice I'll, I'll always give it to you because i never felt like i really had a strong infrastructure like that at the beginning of my career i sought out many different mentors and i have one or two i have two but um you know it took time and i didn't i didn't have that in my early career and you know in my early career i struggled so much more than i even struggle now and um and it was just a lack of guidance but at the same time I could only put that off on so much, on other people so much. And this is what I stress to all new artists. And this is what I didn't do when I started my career. This is what a lot of bands don't do when they start their career. So, okay. Yeah. But, so uh, basically, basically the thing I just can't stress enough for artists and bands when they're starting up is to have a clear understanding of goals and make it tangible, not, you know, if you know some bands they're they're like okay we're going to be the biggest band in the world like lincoln park or you know mother crew or uh, you know whatever and that's that's their plan you know um but you got to be you got to get to honest conversations you got to say what's what's our goal uh to play every saturday locally okay no problem we can do that you know What's our goal? Oh, we want to tour and conquer the world and sell a million records and do all this and do all that. Okay, well, you know that you're probably not going to work like a normal job, right? Like... Say goodbye to your friends and family. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, so it's these <clears throat> hard conversations that you should have early in your career with your team or your band or both that just affirm what what you're doing you know because i definitely spent a lot of my younger years you know trying to figure out what i'm doing instead of you know having somebody tell me lane this is what you should do yep and same and and you know if i could talk to young me you know so right. um, that's 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 really good advice and that's no one's giving me that but I've gotten gotten lots of other responses to that question. So, thank you very much, Lane. Um, thank you for watching. Thank Lane for being on the channel. Stick around. We're gonna catch the music video from Worldwide Panic, and then uh, I'll be I'll see you in the outro. In the meantime, temporarily we'll say goodbye and remember to be amazing. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on Room Six. Uh, other than that, sir, I guess uh, say goodbye. Thank you guys. Check us out worldwidepanicband.com. Get your copy of the new album now, only seven bucks, and then go stream the whole thing on Spotify if you want to listen to it. If you like it, throw seven bucks to get the album. Nice, and I'll have a link for that down in the description as well. Um, cool. Bye, everybody.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you'll check out the social media down in the description for Lane and Worldwide Panic and everything they're doing. They're an awesome band and that LP that's coming soon should be amazing. In the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up using my email address down in the description. We'll have a good time, either physically or virtually. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up there. If you'd like to subscribe, you know it really does make a difference. Click up there and don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not heavy metal, click over there. And I'd appreciate anything you can do to, to help the channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6.